Hello everyone. Today I am going to show you how to uh, access, retrieve your notice of assessment from Revenue Canada and how to read it. So the first step is essentially to log in to my account with CRA. If you are not registered, I encourage you, I strongly encourage you to register as soon as possible because this gives you access to all of your information online in an easy to access manner. And so this information is very important. Okay, so um, this is your homepage once you register and you log in. And the homepage gives you uh, a summary of basically your status. So you can see your tax returns. So there are the accounts and payments um, section, which are amounts that you have paid. Uh, and uh, this income tax balance is what is in your account at this time. So if this said debit, you would owe money to CRA. In this case, it's a credit, so they actually owe $6.18 to this person. So, uh, and you can uh, access your statement of account and see all of your payments and amounts due. Benefits and credits, so if you had applied, for example, the, the child care credit, this would appear here. You can also apply for child benefits directly through this portal. And then here, it gives you a sense of your contribution room and your RSP deduction limits. And on the right-hand side, you have your uh, the progress tracker of tax returns that you have filed recently. Uh, it has the tax information slips, and this is really interesting. This is where you can find the uh, tax slips that have been submitted by your employers, by investors, and anything else that is submitted electronically. And if you go here, say you've lost a tax slip, or you want to see what actually has been submitted, you can go here and, and see that by year. You have uncashed checks, uh, and this is always interesting to see perhaps if you have received some money or relating to previous years in that uh, perhaps you never received it or cashed it. And then tax schemes, beware of tax schemes. So this gives you some information on that. So today we are just going to look at uh, the Notice of Assessment. And to get to the Notice of Assessment, you would click on Tax Returns. First of all, you'll notice here that the tax return was recently filed. You can uh, actually recover the Express Notice of Assessment, or you can wait for the proper Notice of Assessment, which will be available on May 9th. But in my case, I actually want to uh, retrieve a notice of assessment from a previous year, and we will take a look at that and what it means. So let's click on tax returns. So here you can see the notice of assessments for the past few years. If I click on this, there are 13 years available and a few years of assessments. So I am going to go to 2022, pull up the Notice of Assessment. So I will click on that. And you'll notice there's also a PDF version available. So if I click on the PDF, it'll download the PDF and I can now save that in my accounting folder. And I encourage you to do that. It is always good to have a PDF on file for when you need it and there's a variety of reasons that you might need it. So here it just gives you some the personal information. Um, here is an access code, and this access code is really important if you are e-filing your own return, because this will be required information to e-file the return. So as we go down, you can see they have assessed the 22 income tax and benefit return and they have calculated 
um, the balance. So for 2022, the amount payable is here. Uh, and the due date after which they start charging additional interest. And at a certain point, because this balance is fairly substantial, they will send you the whole, they will start to send you threatening letters and so, uh, at a certain point they will just submit your um, amount payable to collections or if it's really a lot, they might even have some authority to go in and take it directly from your bank account. So make sure even if you cannot pay the amount that you call them and work out an arrangement. That's really, really important. Uh, and the phone number is available by just uh, clicking on phone number CRA into, into your internet search. Okay, so again, a little account summary, just, just saying the, the same thing. Uh, if you have made a payment, sometimes it takes a few days for it to post. Regardless, it won't show up here because this is a static notice of assessment. So now it tells you what it has calculated. And this is important. We may review your return later to verify income you reported or deductions or credits you claimed. So even though you received a notice of assessment, it doesn't mean you're safe. Uh, you still might actually have a request for information or an audit from CRA, and this can be in a few years. So it is really important that you keep all of your documentation just in case they do, and that you actually have the documentation to support your deductions and claims. Okay, so as we scroll down, you can see in this case the total income, which is line 15,000. And it's a good idea to compare this to your tax return and to see if there are any discrepancies or differences. And the line numbers give you a way to directly compare. Uh, so then you have some deductions from total income. The most popular deduction is, are usually RRSPs. Uh, but there are all kinds of other deductions and you can refer to your tax return to see what they might be. Your net income, 23,600 is an important line that is often asked for as information when you're signing up for, for government services uh, or perhaps even uh, a third party like a bank might want to, to know that information. And then you have some further deductions from net income uh, and then you have your taxable income. And uh, the taxable income is basically the amount on which your the tax rates apply. So you have your total income, you have deductions, which are different from tax credits, uh, and tax credits reduce the taxes payable, whereas deductions reduce your net income and bring you back to taxable income. And so the net federal tax, so essentially you are paying $11,659 on taxable income of $101,955. You also have some non-refundable tax credits. The most significant of this often is your basic personal amount uh, which is about 15000 and which every Canadian taxpayer is um, exempt from paying taxes uh, on uh, $15,000 or less. So it basically translates into a tax credit. It is multiplied by 15% and it reduces your taxes. So now we have your total tax payable, which is the same as your net federal tax. Um, and uh, the total income tax deducted is what has been taken off at source. So if you simply had a T4, you would, uh, this amount would be very close or the same as this amount, uh, and then there would be no real taxes payable. If you have other items, and this tax return specifically might have included business income or investment income, rental income, those are uh, items on which taxes are not payable at source. Then you have a refundable Quebec abatement, which applies 
to anybody who resides in Quebec. And because in Quebec, you have to submit a second tax return to Revenue Quebec, you get credit for some of your taxes on this side, but then a whole new uh, tax return is, uh, as mentioned, submitted to Revenue Quebec, and you get an assessment and you have to pay taxes uh, to both CRA and Revenue Quebec, which is very, very fun. And then you have your total credits, which is the total of the total income tax deducted plus your refund refundable Quebec abatement. And your payable then is the net federal tax minus these credits, which include the income tax deducted and the uh, Quebec abatement. So essentially you have an amount in this case of 8,300, et cetera, owing. Now there is some arrears interest in this case uh, if payment is made after May 29th. Additionally, you might have interest on installments not paid. And that is something that will be included in the arrears interest category. And the balance from this assessment is essentially this plus any interest. Uh, and the previous account balance is an amount that was relating to the previous year that had not yet been paid. Often this is just a lingering interest charge. Uh, and so this is your total basically uh, and the amount payable. And again, if you have an amount payable and if you can, you should pay it as soon as possible to avoid interest charges. Uh, and uh, given the increase in interest rates, these are going to be significantly higher than you might be used to in previous years. So uh, again, if you have the funds, it's better to pay it and use that interest that would have been charged on something more interesting and gratifying. So now in this section here, they give you an explanation of changes. Uh, if some of the amounts uh, here were incorrect. If you were missing some slips or you had reported incorrect information, it will show up here. Uh, it also tells you about making payment. Um, and you can also call CRA to find out your balance owing. It's an automated service and it will tell you how much you owe as long as you provide this information, your social insurance number, your date of birth. And, and here again, the amount reported line 15,000 of your tax return. And this is line 15,000. They, in this section, they tell you, uh, they give you information about your unused capital losses. Uh, and a capital loss is essentially on account of uh, assets that you may have sold at a loss, often investments, but it could be a rental property uh, and it could be a, a variety of other assets that give rise to capital gains or losses. Uh, capital losses can only be applied against capital gains. The Canada training limit uh, is uh, $750. This, was, this, is recent, uh, this is relatively new. Um, and then it tells you your balance. You include arrears interest. Uh, and it's the interest from the due date of your balance to the date of this notice. This is really important. You might, so in this case, this person will have to pay installments. And um, the installments are based on the previous year amounts. Uh, and sometimes it's a, uh, an average of the previous two years. CRA will let you know what those are via installment notices. Uh, so make sure you check online to see what those installments due are and make those payments by the due dates to avoid additional interest. And then finally, this is really important. Um, and here is where your RRSP contribution limits are included. 
So you'll see there's an RSV deduction. So this is the carry forward amount. And this is since the beginning of time, what you have earned less what you have contributed. For some people, this can be uh, in the hundreds of thousands or certainly in the tens of thousands because they have not used their full RSV contribution room. Um, and then it adds other items. Your, uh, these are employers' pension contributions, a, a specific type of pension plan. Then it shows you how much was deducted, uh, how much you had contributed in 2022. And then it adds the amount for 2023, and it gives you a total the RSP deduction limit for 2023 is 1541. And this is your available contribution room for, in this case, for 2023. On the 2023 notice that you will receive or have already received, it'll show you the amount that you can contribute this year that will then be applied to next year. Uh, and a couple of points in this, again, this can be in the tens of thousands of dollars. You can deduct the full amount or less uh, in any given year, whatever this total is. Secondly, you do not want to over contribute because there are significant penalties for over contribution. Uh, and it tells you that you may have to pay 1% monthly tax on any excess contributions. So it is important to track this and make sure that you are optimizing your RSP contributions. And then it gives you, you know, a phone number to call. Uh, it uh, Now it'll be a little less busy, but it can still take time to get through to someone. But if you do have questions, it is, you know, worth at least trying to figure out what they know. Sometimes if your questions are a little more complex, it is worth uh, speaking to an accountant because CRA, especially um, the first level of CR CRA people, uh, aren't necessarily uh, aware of more complex situations. If you change your address, this is really important. Make sure you reflect this with CRA as soon as it happens. Um, and then it gives you some information on registering disputes, if you want to change your return, etc., etc. So that is a you know an overview of how to read your assessment uh, with uh, from CRA. I hope this was helpful. If you have any um, questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment uh, and please subscribe. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful day.